It's Tuesday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we love your Word. And we thank you and ask you today, Lord, for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Father, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And Lord, I thank you that you are ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way by your Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled, Have Faith in God. And this week on the broadcast, we're learning about the importance of trusting the Lord with all things, for all things, at all times, and no matter what comes. Now let's go over to Mark chapter 11, and let's go back to our foundation text there, and look at verse 22. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, Jesus said this, Have faith in God. Have faith in in God. Now again, in this verse, Jesus is not telling them just to believe in the existence of God or to have faith in God in the sense that believe he is real. He is talking about trusting the Lord. Have confidence in God. In John 14:1, he said, "Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, and believe also in me. Again, he's not talking about believing in God in the sense of believing that God is real. You look up that word believe and you find the word to trust or to have confidence in God. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Isaiah 26, 4 says, trust in the Lord forever. And so friend, God has commanded us to trust Him, to have faith in Him. Don't worry. Don't worry about your kids. Don't worry about your life. But instead, trust me. These are not suggestions. In none of these verses did God say, you know, I want you to try your best to trust me. These are commands these are orders from the head of the church to trust him. And the reason that he commanded it is because good things come to those who have faith in God. Good things will happen for those that trust the Lord. Now, I want to go to Matthew chapter 6 and look at some verses over there in Matthew chapter 6. And as we're flipping over there, I want you to say this with me. I have faith in God. Come on, friends, say it again. Say it out loud. I have faith in God. Say this with me. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart. I trust the Lord with my finances. I trust the Lord with my kids. I trust the Lord with my life. I trust the Lord with my marriage. I trust the Lord where this nation is concerned. I have faith in God. Come on, friend. Those would be good things to say every day of your life. And as you did, you would develop in trusting Him and your faith in Him would grow. Now, when we're talking about having faith in God, when we're talking about trusting in the Lord, we need to ask the question, trust God to do what? Have faith in God to do what? And the, the general principle, the general idea, the general thing that we're trusting God to do is to trust Him that He will take care of you. Trust God to do what? Trust Him that He'll take care of you. Trust Him that He'll take care of your kids. 
Trust him that he'll take care of your church or your men. Trust him to do what? Trust him that he will take care of you. He will take care of you financially. He will take care of you where you're healing and when you're, where your body is concerned. He, he will trust him to take care of you where your mind is concerned. Trust him to take care of you where your marriage is concerned, where your family is concerned. We're trusting God to do what? We're trusting him to take care of me, take care of my family, take care of my kids. This is what we're trusting him to do. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus said this, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, that, that phrase, take no thought, means don't be anxious. Or a lot of translations say, don't worry about your life. Now, again, here we have the head of the church talking to his disciples, talking to his followers, talking to you and me. This is not a suggestion. He didn't say, try not to worry about your life. This is an order. This is a command. And he's telling us, don't worry about your life. What you will eat, you, what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than the meat and the body more than the raiment. Now, more than the clothes, you could say. Now, let me read this to you out of the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible says this, Stop being perpetually uneasy and anxious and worried about your life. I want to read that to you again. Stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. Friend, as believers, we have no business being perpetually anxious and uneasy and worried about our lives or anything in our lives. Jesus told us, don't do it. Don't, don't be worried about your life. Don't be anxious about your life. And so you and I should not be walking around worried and anxious about something all the time. This, this, should, this is, should not be the case when it comes to followers of the master. This should not be the case when it comes to believers. I mean, what must it look like to the world? when Christians are as worried as they are. I mean, what kind of witness is that? Why would they want to follow us? And so you and I, friends, should not be perpetually, all the time, uneasy and anxious and worried about our lives. What should we do instead? Instead of doing that, we should be putting our trust in God to take care of us. So instead of worrying about my life, I'm trusting God to take care of my life. Instead of worrying about inflation and pandemics and recession and mandates, instead of worrying about that, I'm going to trust God to take care of me no matter what comes. Instead of worrying about my marriage or my spouse, I'm going to trust God to take care of me. And so we're not walking around anxious, troubled, perpetually uneasy about something all the time. Believers are not to do that. Instead of doing that, we are going to walk by faith. We are going to conduct our lives in a way that we trust God for all things, with all things, at all times, no matter what comes. Now, let me read the rest of these verses in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said this in verse 27, Behold the fowls of the air. Look at the birds of the air. He said, They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? What is Jesus telling them? What's he telling us? He's saying, Look at the birds. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns. Yet your Father feeds them. What is he saying? He's saying God takes care of the birds. He went on to say, are you not much better than they? 
If God would take care of the birds, wouldn't he take care of you? And so don't worry about your life. What are you going to do instead? Trust your father that he will take care of you. This is what we're trusting God to do. When we're we're telling you, have faith in God, trust God. When Jesus said, have faith in God, when he said in John 14, 1, believe in God, believe also in me, what, what is he telling him to do? Trust God to do what? Trust God that he will take care of you. Jesus went on to say, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. He said, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, Jesus said, therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And so What's he telling him? He's saying, look at how the lilies grow. They don't toil, they don't spin. And your father clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven. He's trying to get them to understand if God takes care of the lilies and God takes care of the birds and God takes care of the grass, God will take care of you. And so trust him to take care of you. See, they weren't trusting Jesus said, O ye of little faith. One definition of that word faith means trusting too little. And so these guys were not trusting God. They were not trusting God to take care of them. And this is the thing we're focusing on on today's broadcast. We are to trust God, but trust God to do what? Trust God that he will take care of you. Trust God that he will take care of your kids. He will take care of your your girls. Don't worry about the pimple-faced boys that are going to be coming to the house when they get older. You know, don't worry about them, them finding the right spouse and don't worry about them getting caught up in the wrong crowd. Don't, don't worry about your girls, your daughters. I'm talking about myself. Don't worry about them. Trust God that he will take care of them. Trust God with your girls so much that you believe no matter where they are, that God will keep them, God will protect them, God will lead them, they get ready to do something that they shouldn't do, that God will convict them, God will correct them, God will show them, trust God with your children. Don't worry about it, trust God and trust him that he will take care of them. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 46. And uh, let's look at verse four there. This is in the New Living Translation. The Lord said this, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. Let me read that to you again. I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. You could say, I will take care of you. The Good News Translation says, I will care for you. I will give you help and rescue you. Friend, God gave us his word that he will take care of us throughout our lifetime. And so trust him that he will take care of you now. He will take care of you later. He will take care of you in the future. You know, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Well, why wouldn't I worry about tomorrow? Because the same God that has taken care of me up until this point, the same God that is taking care of me today, He will be in my tomorrow and he will take care of me tomorrow. I trust him to take care of me tomorrow financially. I trust him to take care of me tomorrow in terms of my healing and my provision and and anything I need. I trust him that he will take care of me. God gave you his word on it in Isaiah 46, 4. I will be your God throughout your lifetime. I made you 
And I will take care of you. And friend, I don't know about you, but I'm going to take God at his word. And I'm going to say, okay, God, if that's what you said to me, then I trust you. I trust you that you're going to be my God through recessions, through, inf through inflations, through pandemics, through hard times, through, through uh, happy times, through dark times, through trials, through attacks. I trust you that no matter what comes, you will take care of me in Jesus' name. Now, I want to close out today's broadcast by reading you a verse in Genesis chapter 48. And I want to look here at verse 15. Genesis 48 and verse 15. And this is at the end of Jacob's life. And I want you to, I want, I want you to listen to what Jacob said. He said in verse 15, excuse me, it says, And he, Jacob, blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. Verse 16, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. Now let me read this to you out of the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible says, who has been my shepherd, God who has been my shepherd, and has led me and fed me from the time I came into being until this day, the redeeming angel who has redeemed me continually from every evil. Now, why did I read that to you? Because I wanted you to see at the end of Jacob's life, he had this testimony. God took care of me all my life long. When evil came, he redeemed me from every evil he fed me. He took care of me all my life long. What a testimony to have at the end of your life that my good God has taken care of me all my life long. And friend, if you will trust him, if you will heed the words of the master to have faith in God, you will have the same testimony at the end of your life that Jacob had at the end of his life. You will be able to look at your kids before you breathe your last, and you will be able to tell them the way Jacob told his son Joseph, God has taken care of me all my life long, and kids, if you trust him, he will do the same for you. Praise the Lord. This is good news, isn't it? Now let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you today, Lord, that you are the God who takes care of us. And Lord, we trust you. We trust you to take care of us no matter what comes. We trust you to take care of our kids, to take care of our family, take care of our finances. We trust you. We trust you to care for us for all things, with all things, at all times, no matter what comes. We trust you that you will take care of us and we declare that at the end of our lives we will have the same testimony that Jacob had at the end of his life that our good God has taken care of us all our lives and Lord we do thank you for it in Jesus name amen friend thank you so much for watching today's broadcast now let me remind you that if you want to get the notes for today's broadcast just go to mam.tv and you can download the notes right there and you can go back over the scriptures and the things that we talked about today. Praise the Lord. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Wednesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled, Have Faith in God. We'll see you then.